July 1944, just a few weeks before the Warsaw Uprising, Ludomir Ruzycki started working on his unique violin concerto. Unfortunately, for many years after his death, the work was unpublished. It was preserved only as a piano score or piano reduction. The composer left only 87 bars of orchestration. It was possible to hear the work in occasionally in Poland, but in the not very perfect uh, reduction. So Janusz, Janusz Wawrowski and the Phoenix Project revealed the concerto by uh, Ruzycki as one of the most important Polish violin concertos of the 20th century. Despite the fact that for the general audience in Poland, Ruzycki was composer of operas and ballet music, the concerto seems one of his most emblematic works, and I do believe that it will be one of the most popular uh, work by Ruzycki in our century. So, uh, we are speaking today about, we are talking, uh, speaking to, 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 tonight about, uh, about a violin concerto by uh, Ruzycki. And first question is, of course, to Janusz, how you managed to discover that this uh, completely unknown uh, piece of, of, of music? How you met the, the score um, for the first time? Actually, I was, I was looking for uh, chamber music for chamber music uh, from this periods of the first uh, half of the 20th century for my uh, chamber music festival. And between all the quintets, quartets, uh, I found the beginning, the score 87 bar, as you said, of the violin concerto. And after many years, uh, I met Zygmunt Richard, conductor, Polish conductor, who told me that uh, he has a piano reduction mm, and violin part and the, 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 the violin concerto was actually finished but, but there is no orchestration and um, I rediscovered <laughs> this, uh, the orchestral score in my, uh, at my home I saw it and uh, I compared it and you know, I was the first person who put all the puzzles together. Because, um, actually, Zygmunt Ruhr had reconstructed it once already, and there was another reconstruction by Jan Fotek from 50s, 60s, so just after the death of Ludomir Ruzycki. But both, uh, both uh, reconstructions uh, didn't include the original score original beginning. So then we have a question, why? Why was it uh, hidden, the, the, okay. the, the orchestral score? Was it uh, in the wrong catalog, in the wrong place? I don't know, but it was very curious. And then, of course, we, get, we got uh, money for rec another reconstruction, which includes 87 bars. And of course, it changed also the, the view of the rest of the orchestration, because when you have the beginning 87 bars, it's around four minutes, mm -hmm. then you can really mm, see the concept of the composer. Of course, the, um, Richard Briwa was responsible for the orchestration. He is a pianist, uh, composer, mm -hmm. um, a musicologist, but I also I was working with him all the time. And we, know, we both uh, knew very well uh, all the symphonic poems, all the operas, all the um, ballets, but also both piano concertos. So, for example, the uh, Mona Lisa symphonic poem, which includes also violin solos, was sometimes very similar to the violin concerto, but also, of course, the piano concertos, uh, which they also had a lot of dialogues inside the structure between the mm, piano solo and the orchestra. So it gave us some vision. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you know, it's, uh, Zagos, it's a question for you as for conductor about orchestration. Is it comfortable or no for, for orchestra? Well, the way it was reconstructed is actually perfect. You don't notice the moment where uh, original orchestration of Ruzycki ended and continuation mm -hmm. uh, by Brewer uh, comes in. Uh, but of course, uh, because the themes are coming back, uh, the composer reorchestrating the work by natural way will look and take the parts from the previous uh, orchestration. So that's what Brewer did and did a splendid job. And <clears throat> in um, recording this work, we had such a tremendous uh, joy and pleasure, and uh, it was uh, amplified 
by joy which the Royal Philharmonic uh, actually uh, had, um, getting acquainted with this completely new work which they loved at first sight. I know also about your con contribution to this viol violin part. Oh, it's, my <laughs> contribution is very small, but uh -huh. I must say that working with Janusz was a fantastic uh, pleasure because he's uh, such a full musician. He knows the score, mm -hmm. orchestra score, as well, very well. And that makes the conversation with conductor completely different. It's on a different level when the co soloist knows exactly every instrument in the score, and we can discuss all that. And uh, I must say that when, before we uh, recorded, we worked together, and uh, it was amazing for me to see that Janusz was so curious. What would I think? What would I suggest? And always trying to find the best uh, possible solution. By the time we went to London, he was perfectly prepared. But after we listened to the first take, at one point, Janusz said, I'm not really happy with this passage, this 16th uh, uh, passage. It, it's just losing a little bit of energy. I don't know what to do with this. And I thought, well, what would our biggest violinist in history, Henrik Piniawski, mm -hmm. do in this pas particular passage? And I suggested, Janusz, maybe if you tried to do it like Piniawski, staccato in this passage. Mm -hmm. And I saw this blink in the eye of Janusz. He said, Let's do it. Mm -hmm. We went out and he made devilish Wieniawski staccato in this passage. It was perfect. And uh, obviously, we found the communication right on the same level, on the same way. <laughs> yeah, and what was uh, your uh, concept for, for uh, mm, addition of this, on, of this uh, music? Yes, I have to. I have to add that, of course, Grzegorz is a violinist, and he was a, mm -hmm. even a concert master of the Opera House. Yes, am I am I right? Yes, and 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 he knows a lot about uh, violin. So that's why I also wanted to know his opinion. But also, it was very important important for me to have an opinion from the, from outside. You know, I was in this violin concerto already three, four years before we, we've recorded. I knew every, every chord, every mistake, you know, everything. So it was, um, and it was a big joy to record with Grzegorz. Um, also, he's a great musician, I mean, chamber musician, because it, it's, it's really hard to, to play with such a big orchestra and to feel uh, like a chamber group. And this was, this was for me very important to show all the details in the score. And of course, the, the violin part is really difficult. It's, it's like uh, Wieniawski or sometimes like Isai, uh, you know, sonatas. But in the same moment, it's, 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 it's a very musical um, piece and it has a, a deepness. It has a lot of dialogues. Sometimes it sounds like a symphony. And also the style of the concerto is very original. For this moment of our history, of the history of music, we had already avant-garde style. Batsevich and other composers, they wrote already very modern violin concertos. And this one is really a little bit like a soundtrack or like Rachmaninoff, I think. So I, I have really a big joy to, it's, I'm very happy to, I can play it, I could record it in London with Grzegorz and Royafi. Uh, this evening is very special for almost uh, all of us because we had the opportunity to hear um, the version of uh, Ruzzi Concerto uh, with uh, original piano version. So, Misha, could you say something about this, the, this, uh, the, this um, piano score, about possibilities for the pianist? Do you like to play this, this part? Well, I must admit that uh, this uh, piano part is written in in a very clever way and also a very comfortable way for a pianist and I, I'm pretty sure that uh, Ruzki really had an idea, a precise idea, how to write it for the piano and uh, it gives me so much joy while playing uh, and uh, that's absolutely, absolutely true what uh, you already said that um, for me Personally, I do not feel like I'm playing the, uh, the orchestra part for uh, the concerto for violin solo, but I feel like I play a chamber music work written for violin and the piano uh, 
absolutely in a full uh, partnership. And uh, it's written in a comfortable way, as I said, but it doesn't mean that it's written in an easy way. And uh, sometimes there are some uh, sets of chords and structures uh, that are really difficult and uh, they are written for a quite big hand, that's what I'm sure about. Um, and f for me personally, it gives a lot of joy to play that, especially with a musician like Janusz, uh, who knows the piano part 100% well. <laughs> and um, also some uh, structures, but also harmony, reminds me of some moments in Rachmaninoff piano concertos, which is for me absolutely fascinating. And that's why this this Phoenix project for me, uh, it, of course, uh, the Ruzki uh, part, it was a really true pleasure. Yes, regarding the, the intimacy that, that you spoke of during the recording session, the, the intimacy of the piano reduction, uh, the circumstances that Ruzitsky was in during the years of occupied Warsaw were so very restricted. And the, the intimacy you mentioned, was it was a very touching thing to hear that, that, that this major concerto could feel so close to the bone in the, in the piano reduction. He was still alive until 1953. Uh, so after 1944, after the Violin Concerto, he managed to write only two pieces. And I think that was because a lot of his music uh, were destroyed, completely burned. And he was very busy with reconstructing all other pieces which were already played. I know the stories about recovering the music from the musicians, for example, from the violinists, double bass players, you know, like he was trying to collect the music and to reconstruct. So maybe that's why he didn't have time. And what I feel from the, from the stories from the book that, um, that he was really um, ill and depressed after the war. So he didn't have really power. He also changed the place. Uh, he, before he was, uh, he was living in, in Warsaw. Then in Katowice he had a new job. And yeah, somehow it went and went out. So the violin concerto was, was one of the uh, latest pieces written by him. Is it possible to uh, find any similar composers to Ruzicki abroad, for example, in England, in America? Uh, um, who could be compared to Ruzicki in, in the, those times? Yeah, Elgar, Elgar mm -hmm. music uh, could come to mind very quickly that uh, it also is based on this neoclassic uh, style. It, uh, goes immediately to the audience and uh, makes this contact immediately. And so is with Ruzicki. His music is uh, really <clears throat> ready for uh, acceptance by a very traditional audience. What, what, what just strikes me over and over about the piece is that it emerged now at a time when the violin has emerged. And somehow there's something that they share in common. And, uh, you, you know, uh, the, the Strad was meant to play the, the, the violin concerto somehow. And, and the, the violin concerto was written maybe for a Strad to come along. It's a very romantic story. And for me, this the, the huge second movement is like a vast romantic fantasy. And, you know, I think for American audiences, all those references, all the cartoonish things in them are really, you know, par for the course. That's what classical music is like. It's not just the mainstream stuff. It's it's very eccentric, very attractive stuff music like this and it's being played by this violin and by this fabulous violinist it's a great it's a great experience that goes beyond you know what we how we can talk about the music itself 
You know, I was thinking about that, that maybe the, he needed to write, he needed to compose something. It, for creative artists during that period of must there must have been a huge pent up need to do what they did who they were and he wrote this huge piece and then maybe he felt it had served its purpose and he went on to other things and you know if he might have returned to it under different circumstances but it writing it was what he really needed at the time that's what composers do. They express themselves by writing music. Which may lead us to the present day once again, and so far as the speculative question of how the violin concerto may have been received in the late 1940s and early 1950s, uh, again, a restrictive time, certainly in Poland. Uh, the, the fantastic question is uh, how audiences w will hear the work today now that it has become available with all its uh, remarkable verve, remarkable especially considering the difficult circumstances uh, of the 1940s as it was composed, but fantastic for us to hear and enjoy now. It speaks very directly, I feel, to the uh, present appetite for uh, beautiful music and hopefully, Shagors, as you were saying, the live music, may it be soon. Yes, live concerts have to come back. It's not the same to listen to recording. It's not the same to play to the empty audience. In fact, we know as performers that the temperature uh, from the audience affects the performance. And uh, you could have the feeling which is completely cold or completely warm. I remember once a concert uh, in Copenhagen with uh, Kathleen Battle. Uh, it was amazing for me to discover just before the concert that she, superstar, was standing in the corner and frightened as if she were a teenage girl making her debut. And uh, the first aria she sang, you could feel that she was tense, but the audience reacted uh, with enthusiasm. And you could feel like Ice melts, and within a few minutes, she became the queen of the show. Uh, audience had to do with this. If the audience were uh, not so friendly and not so enthusiastic, the concert might have been completely different. Otherwise, it was huge, warm success. I just would like to say thank you for Institute of Mickiewicz Adam Mickiewicz Institute and also of Institute of Music and Dance and all, of all the sponsors, Enea and Zapka. And Janusz, you get full credit for all the work that you did, that these organizations had the good sense to support and to back after everything that you had achieved in, in uh, bringing it together. Yeah, thank you. We do our best and we keep it going. Okay, we know that very important partner of your project is Adam Mickiewicz Institute, so would be so kind and tell us something about your cooperation with, with Janusz and Grzegorz. Yeah, thank you for having us. Actually, it's a great honor to be here. Um, the Adam Mickiewicz Institute main goal is to promote Polish culture abroad, and since the very beginning, uh, we are focusing on Polish classical music. Uh, firstly, we uh, promoted uh, Polish composers, but then started to support Polish artists as well. So that project is kind of perfect, as we can bring Polish composer and Polish artists uh, to the work. And nowadays, we are facing a lot of um, challenges, and we live in a difficult time. So. I think that releasing this CD is a huge success of, of all of us, actually. Yes, yes. And that is also the sign of the CD, because it was written in a very dark, very hard times. And it, it can be also, somebody asked about, I think you asked me about the positive uh, energy of this violin concert. Maybe it's even one of the most optimistic works mm -hmm. by, by Ruzycki. Maybe it's kind of manifesto in the darkest time, to, to show the positive energy of the art. The lightness. Yes, the joy. yes, exactly. So I hope maybe also for the listeners in those days, it will be kind of this positive energy for, the, for tomorrow, for next year, for two years, I don't know. Yeah, maybe nowadays we 
to have not to only bring the, the culture, but also some joy, some positive emotions. Yes, and you could also feel tremendous joy from this uh, music, joy which emanates from the way Janusz performs it. Mm -hmm. And we all, with the Royal Philharmonic, joined him in this joy, and it just is tremendous. It just comes out of this music immediately. The solution which uh, Janusz uh, chose is the this option to promote uh, something what is very rare, to, to combine Tchaikovsky's very well-known pieces with uh, to take yes. the opportunity of yes, taking advantage of. Yes, and that actually I tried to convince him for a while that uh, even so it's so demanding and it would task him so much in promotion of this wonderful concerto which he discovered Let's do like this, this huge Tchaikovsky concerto together with Rzycki. In the concert. Yeah, <laughs> In the and concert. from yes. the very first reviews we can realize that people are interested in new work, but just we, they need to be familiar with it. Yeah. Exactly, and we hope that it will work. We'll see on the evening of the concert if they come, but I'm sure they will. Okay, thank you everybody for, for this interesting evening, and now we should back to music and to hear uh, this, uh, the, this concert for, for the next time. Yes. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Some people compare this violin concerto, Rzycki's violin concerto, to Szymanowski. I think especially the first violin concerto. Maybe that's also because of the places with very high register violin. Let's show it. So as you can see, the violin is singing a lot and it's very argumenta. It's, this is really very violinistic and maybe that's kind of Polish, uh, young Poland in music style. <laughs> um, what I find incredibly interesting and fascinating about uh, this version for violin and piano uh, of Różycki Violin Concerto is that I do not have the feeling that I play the piece for violin solo and the piano part as orchestra, but there are many fascinating moments of the real chamber music playing and uh, like the exchange of energy or, and interactions between the violinist and the pianist. And here is one example of that. Wonderful. So the time distance between the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto and the Rosicki Violin Concerto is around 65 years. But I see uh, very similar techniques. I mean about especially the virtuoso places. Sometimes they are really similar. And Rosicki uses uh, very similar techniques, uh, very similar chords. Uh, and we can show maybe this place it's, it's the moment in the first movement when it goes a little bit forward and it's more dramatic. opinion uh, this version for violin and piano uh, it has many many moments when we can really feel uh, the uh, instrumental uh, thinking like uh, in the piano part I can really hear the orchestra and uh, one of the most beautiful instruments 
um, is harp. And uh, in this piano part, I can sometimes really feel like I play the harp. And this is one of the, uh, in my opinion, the most magic moments uh, where in the orchestra there is a harp and I can feel like harpist. It reminds me a little, a little bit uh, Ravel, maybe. Uh, yeah. Cigan. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have some memories uh, from our recording in London, but also, uh, also in Warsaw playing with Symphonia Varsovia, that, it's, that this, this harp part is really incredibly hard. It's very complicated, although the, the um, harp part was uh, consulted with the very good harpies, Susanna Elster, and thank you very much because she did a great job, but then after she played it and she was really surprised that it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Although this uh, concerto, violin concerto by Ludomir Ruzicki is, uh, uh, there is a lot of singing places, so, uh, I can sing a lot, but there are also many places uh, which are really uh, virtuosic places. Uh, I think, I feel some connection with Henryk Wieniawski, with even Izai, maybe, a lot of double stops, very high double stops, but also a lot of arpeggios. For example, like in this small cadenza in the first movement. actually reminds me as well a poem by Chausson. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, indeed. <laughs> this music reminds me a little bit of Rachmaninoff as well, especially the, the piano uh, concertos. And uh, actually there were places which were quite difficult to do with the, with the orchestra. I mean, I, I always wanted to do, you know, more rubato, a little bit forward, a little bit backward, and it was a little bit complicated, uh, of course, it's a big orchestra, more than 70 people. Um, but I think there are places like this which are much easier with the piano and we can do really huge rebuttals. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try. <laughs> Yeah, so it's really like, a, you know, like a violin and piano sonata. It's, what a pleasure to play with you. Thanks. <laughs> with you too. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks.